Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to season three of the Agile World, where we discuss customer and employee experience, organizational and workforce transformation, and how business can adapt and continually improve in an Agile age. The Agile World podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed in this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile World podcast. Welcome to a special episode of the show brought to you in partnership with Arlington Economic Development, where we discuss issues related to the workforce, the role of place in the future of work, and the role of the creative sector in a larger business context. We call this return on creativity. Today, we're going to talk about the return to the office and how companies can attract and retain the best employees in a hybrid work environment. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Steve Blair, President, Lyceum Insurance Services. Uh, first, uh, Steve, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you do at uh, Lyceum? Hi, my name is Steve Blair, and I am the president of Lyceum Insurance Services, and I wear many hats. Um, my favorite hat is getting to help people every day. Um, and, and one of the ways that we've really been helping people lately is um, not only helping them with their employee benefits and the challenges of that these days with what's happened in the post kind of COVID world and, and, and uh, what's happening with people either working remotely or starting to come back to the office, but also with their business insurance and HR needs. We've, we've expanded a lot, especially during the COVID period. Our clients have needed a lot more. And we've brought in some special talent to be able to assist our clients in a lot of those areas. So, you know, in the employee benefits world, we're helping our clients with their health insurance, life dental vision, all that good kind of stuff that employees need. Um, and employers enjoy giving because it helps attract and retain talented employees and keeps our employees healthy, um, as well as managing, you know, with the business insurance, the health of the business and making sure the business can continue to be financially stable and viable in the event that something bad happens, um, where yeah. there's potentially a lawsuit or something like that, or events related to things like COVID and the pandem pand pandemic. And that's, that's affected us a lot and our clients and in, in, in their needs and things that they've been doing. So um, we're happy to be able to give all of those uh, all of those things to our clients and be able to help them out. And I'm very happy to be here to kind of share my thoughts with you. Great. Well, yeah, no, looking looking forward to talking with you about this. And so let's you know, let's start with the return to the office. So lots of yeah. lots of companies are, are talking about this. We often refer to this this mixture of remote and in office uh, employees as the hybrid workforce. And yeah. this is, you know, it's posing a challenge for employers as they need to attract and retain employees that work mm -hmm. in a variety of ways. Um, how can uh, companies use employee benefits as a way of attracting and retaining employees? Well, I, I think that's a couple of questions in there. <laughs> let's let's peel the onion apart, shall sure, we? Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, employee benefits historically has always been, you know, for the past several decades, a, a good way to attract and retain. And the idea is that um, giving an employee more than their financial compensation in terms of salary, there's a lot of other things that go into making somebody financially whole. Um, as a, and so by putting together a good package that protects people's health and in turn financial health um, from that and their dental and their vision. And you know if you can't work because you get sick um, or injured in some way and you're not going to go bankrupt in terms of you know, we, we're creating programs that will help with some salary continuation with disability insurance and things like that. But it all comes down to you as an employer, not only offering the very best in terms of financial compensation, but these other items um, that we call employee benefits um, that really round out and protect the employee from events that could potentially happen. And, and the government has given employers deductions tax deductions to be able or advantages i should say to be able to give these type of programs 
um, to their employees on a tax advantage basis for the business as a way of the government saying, well, we would prefer people to be getting these type of things through their employer um, and then putting programs in place, whether it's, you know, tax deductions or tax um, advantages, whether you're buying a plan in a small group marketplace, like in one of the Affordable Care Act exchanges or directly with the carriers. So it's it really helps um, when employees are looking at their total comp, you know, everything that an employer is contributing towards that compensation, it's important for employers to be able to show your total compensation is not just the salary, that is the first level, but yeah. there is certainly a cost in terms of the type of benefits, you know, how rich they are and how they're funded uh, in terms of employer contribution for employees to be able to enroll to all these different programs. So the idea is when we're attracting or even retaining as people are looking at other um, sources of employment that they can see that the best comes from you. So you're able, as you're out looking for the best talent, you have, want to have a nice, robust, rounded out package um, that sits on top of a great salary to help bring the best talent to your office, as well as keeping them in their seats yeah. and not leaving because somebody's going to offer a different benefits program. And, and we often see that, you know, and I'm, I'm brought in a lot of times on calls you know, I have employers that are like, hey, I'm trying to recruit this person. Can you talk to them for me and tell them how great our benefits program is? And I'm always like, yes, of course, I'll be your 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 head cheerleader. <laughs> um, and and so, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm the cheerleader that talks about these things. So yeah. um, it's been important, especially now. Now we'll, we'll kind of shift a little bit to this hybrid workforce. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that we've seen kind of post pandemic has been a lot of migration with employees. So before people are starting to come back to the office now, you know, I started seeing employees disappear kind of all over the world. You know, I was talking to employees or emailing with employees in, you know, South Asia and Asia and South America and North Africa and Europe. There were people just kind of spreading all over the place during the pandemic and that created challenges, not only, you know, about people potentially having medical claims internationally, but even domestically here in the United States, all of a sudden I have employers that were hiring a local workforce and half of them are now living spread around the country all the way out to the West Coast. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into employee benefits, especially when we talk about networks and carriers, that all of a sudden there may be a carrier that's very strong locally here in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, but maybe isn't as strong a carrier in terms of providing benefits on a national focus. And now as an employer where we were typically focused on D.C. metro, now we're talking about employees that you know are, are spread domestically all over the United States. And how do we have to make shifts uh, to be able to accommodate that change? And we're seeing that with now that people are starting to go back to work, you know, I'm still seeing employers and then I work with several hundred employer groups in and around the Washington DC metropolitan area. And, you know, from an HR challenge and in terms of benefits challenge, we have people that are living and working out of the area um, or are working from home and then have to, you know, or maybe only commuting into the office, you know, two times a week or three times a week and still working from home quite a bit. Yeah. So the challenge is not just, you know, do I have the right plan? That's step one. Um, but step two of that is how can I properly administrate that? Where I used to be able to walk down to Jane's office and say, hey, Jane, I need that enrollment form from you. Um, now maybe Jane isn't working in the office and she's someplace else, right. maybe in a different state. And how do I better communicate not only employee benefit information and the administration of that, but also, you know, now from an HR perspective, I have to be able to communicate the wants and needs of the organization to people that may not be in the office or may only be in the office part time. So how can we better communicate not only the employee benefits information that we were just talking about, but other changes within the company, you know, um, changes in employment policy, especially if you're, you're allowing people to work from home still and not telling everybody they have to come into the office full time. 
you know, how can we better plan and communicate all of these changes out to our employees on an ongoing basis, given that, you know, our employees aren't really static in one location anymore, but potentially in this new hybrid workforce, um, maybe they're static sometimes, but other times they're, it's a little bit more dynamic in that, you know, people are in, in other locations. So it, it creates a lot of challenges and that's, that's really helped us kind of pivot as an organization uh, to bring in the talent that we needed to be able to um, assist our clients, not only in the employee benefits area, but in the HR communication and, and the administration of all of these different programs. Yeah, I mean, would you say that uh, remote work or, or let's say hybrid work has made the HR person or team's jobs more complex then? Is that- Sure, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean. Like I said, you used to be able to talk to people in person, and now you don't have that opportunity necessarily. You're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, or you know, you you can't you don't have you can't go sit on somebody's in somebody's office in their desk at their desk and say, "All right, fill out that form. I'll sit here and wait for you." Um, it's it's certainly made things more complex in that, and it's the idea is that you want to make sure you have the right systems. Um, whether we're automating the communication processes or we're planning a better way for not only communicating out the things that I've already talked about, but if you think about, you know, how are we helping our client or our employees um, as an organization be able to grow in terms of learning and learning management systems and being able to help people feel like they have growth in their position um, a lot of that has changed. You know, how are you going to reach people um, that aren't in your office to do training? And so we've, we've, you know, brought in a new learning management system that's online to be able to help our clients with that. And, you know, there's a lot of things now that employers maybe didn't need to think up about before, but now they're, they're certainly having to think about things in a little bit of a different way because of that. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in some ways, some of the things you mentioned already, uh, there's a, there's a technology component to this where, sure. you know, often there was a lot more face to face, but now, um, yeah, I know you touched on it, but you know, what, what are some of the other things that, that Lyceum does to, um, to make that easier for whether it's for your direct clients or for your, your, your clients, employees? Sure. That's a great question. Um, we've made significant investments in technology and software uh, that will allow employers to be able to do research, especially, you know, if you think about an employee that leaves, um, maybe you have an employee that went, that was living here. And now all of a sudden you have an employee that's working in New York and there's certain rules in New York about people that are working there. And you may not even know about that liability until you get a bill because New York is famous for this sending a bill in the mail to say, hey, we noticed you have an employee here. You didn't participate with these certain programs that you have to do. And, you know, it's kind of like I only know what I know. So we've invested a lot to help build out HR departments and provide better technical information. So if somebody does move to a different state, for instance, you can type in New York and it will pull up everything you need to know about an employee in New York and everything you need to have with that. So we have a, a really cool client portal that we've put in that employees can go in and do a lot of research. Um, because things have changed so much, um, I, I mentioned the learning management system. Um, you know, we've had to do, we've installed our own um, and participated in an online enrollment tool because now you can't take that paper form to somebody's right, office. You right. need to have, you know, I got somebody in California. Do I want to be chasing around documents and scanning and emailing them that those aren't necessarily secure? And you're putting, you know, potentially some HIPAA data, but definitely some privacy data on there in terms of social security numbers and addresses and salaries and things like that, that you wouldn't want to get hacked. It's better to use a, a system that is secure to be able to manage that enrollment and termination process. So we've, we've installed those type of systems. We were already working on them before, um, but the with the change with the pandemic, it really became clear that, that that needed to be built out a little bit more robust. And you know, a lot of the things that I'm talking about now, large employers have always had, they've always been given that, but 
when you're talking about the small to medium sized business, which are most of the employers in the Washington DC metropolitan area, we certainly have some very large employers, but most of the employers in the Washington DC metropolitan area have less than 50 employees, you know? And so now how do I, where I'm already stretched, maybe I don't have a full-time HR person. uh, Maybe I have an office manager or an in-house accountant or a bookkeeper that's doing that plus, you know, administrating the office and handling all HR stuff. And, and again, it comes down to what do I know? What I only know what I know. And so because of that, we've actually put in tools where our clients can call a 1-800 number and talk to an HR professional to ask for information or, you know, if I have to terminate an employee, what's the best way to do it? Here's the situation. Um, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have that? So we've, we've built out a lot of things there to help build out the HR departments or give um, more robust services to, and you know, like an office manager that happens to be wearing many hats to be able to feel like they have a full HR team to help them, you know, pivot and be successful in this kind of hybrid workforce model that seems to be appearing. Yeah. Well, uh, we're looking forward to your and, and Lyceum's participation in the Return yeah. on Creativity Return to Work uh, virtual event on July 13. Um, so, you know, we're going to be talking with a, a number of different people from, from different backgrounds about the return to the office. Yeah. And, you know, just one, one other way of, of looking at this in a, in a slightly different way. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the news articles lately have been, I think, centered on things from the employee perspective, how, you know, employees have a lot of agency now where they can choose not to go back into the office or they mm-hmm. can, you know, let's say put up a fight a little bit or, or, um, you know, at, at least, um, you know, put, put out a stance there on, you know, on their, on their approach. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about from the employee perspective, how do companies balance, you know, giving employees what they need with, you know, the bottom line and, and, you know, what the company also needs, like, how do you, how do you take that into account from, you know, from that HR perspective? Well, you know, as, as business people, we would, and, and I say business people as to whether or not you're, you know, a professional service, like a doctor or a lawyer or a nonprofit or even, you know, a government entity, we only have so many dollars to spend towards, Um, these type of services. And the idea is that we want to try to find the best balance for those. It's interesting. One thing that you said is I've also within our industry been reading a lot of articles about how there's been a huge power shift between employees or prospective employees having a lot more power in that negotiation for a job. And we're starting to see employers that are having to be a lot more flexible, especially in the return to work, because there are a lot of employers out there that are allowing their employees to continue to work 100% remote. Um, I've, and I've seen a mix of that. I've had clients that are like, nope, employees have to be here because of the nature of our work. If you're a doctor's office, you know, right. your, your business is in that office. And there are a lot of even you know, what I would call more white collar type work that are in office settings that they need that collaborative work and they haven't found a good way to be able to do that remotely. Um, For their employees, I've I've been talking to clients that are like, my employees want to come back. They're tired of being at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, So really it comes down to, you know, what type of resources do we have to be able to put towards this? And, and the idea is that you want to talk to somebody like myself and my team that can help you get the best use of those dollars because every organization, every business is different and it's really coming in and evaluating what the wants and needs are for any one particular organization. Um, and then being able to make some firm recommendations behind it that can meet that not only, you know, the goal of this is what we need to do. Um, but also the goal of these are the dollars that we have to spend towards this project and finding a nice balance there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, one last question before we wrap up, uh, Lyceum, uh, works with employee benefits, which we've talked about as well as risk management, HR consulting for a variety of different um, types of companies. We didn't really talk much about the risk management or or HR consulting aspects of of your business. 
What are some of the considerations companies should take in, in this new work environment in those areas? Um, from the risk management standpoint, um, depending on the type of events that you're doing, you know, there is event insurance. Um, a lot has changed with that. A lot of companies um, lost money, especially a lot of nonprofits that we work with, with their national events uh, that had to be canceled that were major fundraisers for them. And they had, you know, a lot of those policies had pandemic waivers. So, yeah. you know, a lot of these insurance companies didn't have to pay out. Now there's subsequent lawsuits because of that happening um, within the insurance industry. Um, but it's a good idea to have somebody look at what you have in your policies because of things like potential pandemics and other type of events that could occur that could affect those. Number two, you know, I touched on this before, if you have employees that are now working differently, you know, if your work comp program was set up that you had office workers in one location, that is probably going to have to be looked at, especially if you have employees working yeah. in different states. There's different rules, as I mentioned, different states have different rules, especially around work comp and other type of things that you need to talk to a licensed professional that can really get in and look at the details of what you have and be able, like I said, to sh to, to um, pivot and shift um, for what you need in those areas. Same thing, you know, with your office liability insurance, if, if you don't have people in the office and they're working at home, you know, maybe you don't have as much liability that as you may need. It's really important to be able to look at those types of things. Yeah. And, and then from, you know, the HR perspective, you know, how do we tie all these things together? You know, HR people are, are wizards uh, oftentimes, <laughs> you know, managing, you know, because a lot of times they have to work around, you know, the risk management or communications internally and employee benefits. And, all, you know, they're, they oftentimes are sitting at the table, you know, with all of the other um, management level executives in a business and, trying to make strategic business decisions. Um, it's, it's good to have a good team that has, that can, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop that you can go in and, and be able to say, well, these are all the problems that we're having. We're, we have employees moving. How does that affect? And it, and it's not just me. If I was just an employee benefits person saying, oh, well, you know, you just need a national network. Well, it's more than that. We need to review the work comp policies. And if you don't have somebody that specializes in, in HR, as well as that risk management, you know, you may have a liability that you don't even know that you have. And yeah. so it's important that, uh, because if you're talking to a bunch of different people, potentially what could happen is things can fall through the cracks. So, you know, it's good to work with a company, um, one like ourselves that has the ability to help people in a lot of different areas to help kind of close up some of those gaps and do so efficiently. That's great. Well, Steve, thanks so much for joining the show. Yeah, it's uh, my pleasure. Yeah. For those listening, what's the, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Uh, you know, go to our website. It's Lyceum, L-Y-C-E-U-M-I-N-S.com. Lyceumins.com. We've we're, we're constantly putting content on there, um, current content, things that are affecting, you know, businesses in the current market conditions. We, we send out a newsletter every week. We've got a great blog online to see what we're happening and people can contact us right through our website. We're always available and love to talk to people. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank Steve Blair, president of Lyceum Insurance Services for joining the show. To learn more about Return on Creativity brought to you by the Agile World and Arlington Economic Development, please go to returnoncreativity.com. Thanks for listening to the Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to the Agile World podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, from my website at theagile.world.